Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to this evening's service, April 22nd, the penultimate day in this series. What does the word penultimate mean? Next to the last. Next to the last. Thank you, Dr. Mike. Next to the last. Yes. God has brought us a long way, has he not? Amen. God has brought us a long way, has he not? Amen. I am very grateful to God for the way he has led us and blessed us. Brought us all this way from April the 2nd to April 22nd, and we end tomorrow, April 23rd. How many of you have come every night so far? Can I see your hands? That's nice. That's nice. You only miss one night. Can I see your hands? Two nights. Can I see your hands? Three. Okay. Let me stop before I get you. You've missed 20 nights. <laughs> How are you? I'm delighted to see you. I really am. Thank you for coming. I have a surprise for you this evening. Would you like to know what it is? I brought my phone to show you. I do have one. I know every night you would show off with your phones, and uh, I told you I have one. You didn't believe me. But it does everything except forgive sins, this phone right here. <laughs> it has internet, it has GPS, I can do everything on this phone. <laughs> Now, I'm going to do something with this phone that's remarkable. I want you to follow my example. Let's turn it off. I'm turning it off. I want you to see. Here we go. And it's going off. Will you zoom that in? No, don't zoom on it. <laughs> it's a fairly heavy phone, so I'll leave it on the desk while I preach. Please remind me to pick it up on my way out. Who's with us this evening for the first time? Raise your hand. First time, first time. God bless you. God bless my little brother. You look like a preacher. God bless you, my little brother. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? God bless you, sister. Thank you, my dear brother. I see your hand. Someone else? God bless you, my good brother. God bless you, my young sister. God bless you. Thank you very much for coming. Did I miss a hand? Thank you. Thank you, my dear sister, for lifting the hand back there. Someone else I missed, all right. We're identifying somebody who's not raising that. Okay, God bless you. We are pleased you've come. Have I covered all the first time guests? All right, is my sister in law Dorothy here? She told me she's coming. I don't see her. She would have been up to the front. All right, perhaps she hasn't come yet. I hope she shows up. All right, our subject for this evening actually has two titles one is Selecting the Jury, the other one is People in Glass Houses should move. <laughs> Selecting the jury or people in glass houses should do what? Move. Move. Let's uh, do two more favors for me. Number two, while I'm speaking, please pray for me and all I want you to say is, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. I believe you've been doing that. Please do it tonight with greater fervor because this is the 21st day of the series and I believe there are some people still rustling with decisions that need to be made. The Bible says today, if you will hear his voice, do what? Harden not your heart. The Bible does not make a lot of room for decisions to be made tomorrow. They should be made today. That's the intelligent way to think. And favor number three, we'd like you to think as you listen. Let us pray now. Loving Father in heaven, you are a good God. And we thank you for that. We're glad that you are God and no one else. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we come into your presence and we ask today, God, to bless us with the revelation of your will through the spoken word. Forgive our sins, Father. Grant us the mind of Christ that we may think like him, speak like him, and behave like him. As for me, God, take possession of my mind totally. Use me as an instrument, Father. I offer no resistance. I lay my glory in the dust and seek only to lift up your name and the truth as it is in Jesus. Please, God, hear this humble prayer and answer it, we pray, with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen, amen. 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 and Amen. There are some principles by which God conducts himself. And I don't want to humanize God too much, but in talking about God, you have to use human terms. Because our minds are limited, we don't understand spiritual things too much and too well. But those of us who are faithful on the other side, when we live with Christ eternally, we shall understand spiritual things. Welcome Dorothy, welcome Jerome, my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law are marching into the left. Somebody say amen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Did your friends come, Dorothy? Oh, they couldn't make it. Oh, okay, that's all right. That's okay. Where's Sarah? Sarah usually sits right here. I haven't seen Sarah for a while. Where's Geraldine? All right, okay, just checking on familiar faces. Getting back to the principles by which God conducts himself. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That tells us a principle upon which God functions, which is this. In any conditional promise, a conditional promise means that before God does something, we have to do something. Wherever there is a conditional promise, if we do our part, finish it for me, God will always do His. That's a principle by which God functions. Never doubt that principle. Any promise that has an if, any conditional promise, when we fulfill our part, which is the conditions, God always does His. That's a principle by which God functions. In John 14, reading from verse 1, the Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have what? Told you. Here is another principle by which God functions. He tells us everything we need to know. And if something changes, he will let us know. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you, you can trust God to let you know what it is you need to know. Amen. There's another principle which is absolutely essential to God's self-respect, if I may use that expression, and that is this. Listen carefully. Before God, inflicts judgment on the earth. He discusses his intentions with someone on the earth. Amen. Let me say that again, differently. God never ambushes the earth with judgment. Amen. God does not sneak up on people. Satan does, not God. God is an upfront God. Amen. If it were not so, I would have told you. Amen. Amen. God doesn't hide anything you and I need to know. <clears throat> Let me repeat. Whenever God is preparing to execute judgment on the earth, He first reveals His intentions to someone on the earth that that person, as a representative of the earth, may see that what God is about to do is just. Amen. Now, God does not have to do that because God is just. God cannot be unjust. In Psalm 145, verse 17, the Bible says, The Lord is righteous in all His ways and holy in all His works. God is always right. But God likes to go the extra mile Amen. to convince us He's a just God. Amen. That's how eager he is not to have us accuse him falsely. And so when Cain said, my punishment is greater than I can bear, God stepped in immediately and did something. He put a mark on Cain so that people would leave him alone. God Amen. does not want to be accused of being excessive in his punishment. Amen. Now before God set the flood, he discussed it with a man. Who was that man? No. So that someone representing the earth could examine God's intended action and speaking on behalf of the earth, that person can say, you're just. Whatever is coming, we deserve. And so we go to Genesis chapter 6, reading from verse 5. Our subject is, people in glass houses should move. Or, selecting the jury. Which title do you like? Selecting the jury. All right. My doctor friend said, selecting the jury. And since he was first, we'll go with that. <laughs> you must be quick when I ask you questions. All right. And let me welcome those listening by Vimeo.com or YouTube or uh, any other program that allows people to view videos. Thank you for watching day after day. We hope God has been blessing you. 
and we're pleased you're joining us, even though it's a recorded version you're listening to. Genesis chapter 6, reading from verse 5. The Bible says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the law that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Let me pause and ask you a question. Look at that verse again. The verse says, It repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Let's read verse 7 first before I ask you the question. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowl of the air. Why? For it repenteth me that I have made it. In other words, God said, I regret. Now, how far do we have to push God? For God to say, I regret having made you. Now remember, God's mercy is almost endless. You can't measure it. But the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. A God of everlasting mercy. What level of wicked behavior from humanity can drive him to the place where he has to say publicly, I regret having made you. Let me bring it home to Los Angeles. Southern California. Anyone listening anywhere. Look at your life and let me look at mine. Is God regretting having given us life? Let me make it more narrow. Is God sorry he let us live today? Based on the way we've lived our lives, is he sorry? Does he look at us and say that's a wasted life? My brothers and sisters, what God said of the world apply to every individual. Amen. Amen. God could have individualized and said, I'm sorry I let you live. I really had no time to do all of that. There were so many people. I'm sorry I let all of them live. Let us so live that God can say, I am delighted. Amen. I let you live. Amen. But Noah found grace in the eyes Amen. of the Lord. I like that but. It divides the whole world back then into two groups. Those that God said, I regret giving you life, and Noah and his family. Amen. These are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Let me pause again. Listen to the words. Genesis 6, 12. And God looked upon the earth. God examined the earth. And behold, it was corrupt. Why? For all flesh had corrupted his way. In other words, you alone can corrupt your life. We like to blame people for the lives we live. He did that, and she did not. You have the power of choice. The Bible says, for all flesh had corrupted his way. We must learn to take responsibilities for the lives we live that displease God. And so when God came down into the garden to examine what went wrong, the Bible says in Genesis 3, 9, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked. Who can finish that first? And I hate myself. This wasn't a family decision, as it may appear in verse 8. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Genesis 3, 7 and 8. No, this was an individual decision. Adam said, I hid myself. So who hid Eve? Myself. Who made you a sinner? Myself. You. Who made me a sinner? Yourself. Me. Well, smile when you say that. <laughs> You're talking to the priest. <laughs> we, we make ourselves sinners. Yes. And so Genesis 6, 12 said, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. God looked upon Los Angeles, behold, it was corrupt. God looked upon Detroit, behold, it was corrupt. God looked upon Paris. Behold, it was corrupt because every resident of Los Angeles, Detroit, Paris, and all the other cities corrupted themselves 